the real news in our next story is that it's no longer news. It used to be news, but now even progressive blogs pay little attention as I utter a phrase that would have drawn a national gasp of shock and horror just 10 years ago. In our third story today, former President Bush last night confessed to committing a war crime. Mr. Bush, speaking before mostly friendly audience of 2300 in Grand Rapids, no cameras, no recording devices, no record, just witness accounts, reportedly admitting not only, quote, yeah, we waterboarded Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, but also asserting, quote, I'd do it again to save lives. What makes this latest confession so interesting is Mr. Bush's subconscious hint that he knows it was useless the first time. I'd do it again, he said, to save lives. If saving lives were a part of it the first time, why add that phrase instead of just saying, I'd do it again? Despite the claims of torture instigator Dick Cheney, the waterboarding of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed has not been demonstrated to have saved a single life, not in those two CIA memos that Cheney swore would prove him right if only they were declassified, until the Obama administration called his bluff and released the memos which identified not a single life saved, nor a single incident only waterboarding could reveal. Waterboarding did not make Mohammed give up Jose Padilla. He was given up by Abu Zubaydah during traditional legal interrogation before waterboarding even began. And the Heathrow Airport plot given up along with details about a Southeast Asia terror group the CIA inspector general believes because Khalid Sheikh Mohammed thought the CIA already knew about them, which is a classic legal interrogation trick. The best claim, of course, that waterboarding Mohammed gave investigators key information to break up a plot to blow up the library tower in L.A., a plot that was broken up in 2002, a year before Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was captured. What do we know that we got from waterboarding? Lies. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed told the military that he lied to end the torture, 183 separate waterboardings. One lie he told was where to find Osama bin Laden. How do we know he was lying? No bin Laden, remember? The Bush administration actually got its waterboarding techniques from the study of techniques the communist Chinese used during the Korean War to make prisoners lie for propaganda purposes. And what lie did Bush and Cheney want to hear? Ibn Sheikh Alibi was captured in 2001, subjected to enhanced interrogation techniques. He gave up the link between Iraq and al-Qaeda. Well, made it up, actually. By the time we learned that, Mr. Bush had already used Alibi's tortured lie to justify invading Iraq. Mr. Bush's decision to invade Iraq, only one of many ways in which his decision to waterboard, to torture, has actually clearly cost more American lives than we can calculate. Not just because if he had let experienced professional interrogators do the work, they might have actually gotten some additional intelligence, but also because at least half of our casualties in Iraq were at the hands of foreigners motivated to fight by American torture. This the estimate of an actual U.S. interrogator in Iraq. This interrogator who used real interrogation to help get al Zakarwa objected to the torture methods, but Mr. Bush already should have known waterboarding was wrong, wrong when Americans were court-martialed for doing it during the Spanish-American War and during the Vietnam War, wrong when Americans prosecuted Japanese soldiers for doing it to Americans during World War II, wrong when the British and Americans refused to use any form of torture against the Germans in World War II, wrong when a sheriff and three deputies went to prison for it in the 1980s in Texas. Mr. Bush last night had other things to say. His greatest disappointment, not relying on torture to send U.S. troops to die under false pretenses, not ignoring the threat of al-Qaeda, not failing to prevent 9-11 or failing to fulfill his promise to avenge the dead of 9-11. No, he said the biggest disappointment of his presidency was failing to privatize Social Security. It may yet rank among the biggest disappointments of the Obama presidency that in the 21st century, a man can confess in public, yeah, we waterboarded, I'd do it again without fear of arrest or prosecution, or justice.